guys, Mimi G here with another sew along. Today we're going to be doing the Jessica, which is a PDF pattern that you can find on my blog, which is linked in the description box below. Now, normally this PDF pattern is not free, but today I'm going to let you guys download the pattern for free to thank you for all the love and support that you guys not only show my YouTube channel, but also my blog, my Instagram, and my Facebook. So to say a very big thank you, I'm giving you this PDF pattern for free, and I'm doing a sew along to show you how to put it together. Let's get started. Okay, so if you're new to PDF patterns or you have never uh, printed and taped one together, it's very simple, there's nothing hard about it. And in the blog post linked in this description box, I will give you some links to not just some uh, other blog posts on how to tape and cut out your pattern, but also a video that I did on how to print it, tape it together, and then of course cut your fabric. Along with your PDF pattern, you get um, your instructions. Now you don't have to print these out. You simply can view them on your phone or your tablet or on your computer. But I'm just going to go through it really quickly to show you what's inside. Obviously here's the flat sketch of the dress, table of contents, we do the pattern size, we go from extra extra small to 2XL. We also have your finished garment measurements, printing information, how to put your tiles together, you also have seam allowance, fabric suggestions, pattern symbols, anything that you're going to need to know. Then your pattern pieces. We have the fabric requirements per size. And then of course the sewing instructions which you can follow along in the printed instructions or just watch the video. Okay, let's go over the pieces you're going to need to cut. So once you tape it together, you're going to cut out pattern piece number three which is your front bodice. And then you're going to cut out pattern piece number one, which is the center back. This is cut on the fold. Then you're also going to cut out number four, which is the side front bodice. You're going to cut two. You're going to cut your facings. You have your back bodice facing and you have your front bodice facing. Now you're going to cut the back on the fold, but you're going to cut two of the front. You also need to interface both of these pieces. So after you cut them out of fabric, make sure you interface them. You're going to cut out pattern piece number nine, which is the front skirt button band. Pattern piece number 10, which is the straps. You're also going to cut pattern piece number two, which is the side back bodice. Pattern piece number 11, which is our pocket. And pattern piece seven and eight, which is the front and back of our skirt. The back is cut on the fold, the front is not. I have already cut out all of my pattern pieces and I interfaced both my back facing and my front facing and I forgot to mention that you should also interface the front button bands. Okay, go ahead and grab your back skirt which was cut on the fold and we're going to lay right sides facing. So grab your front. You're going to pin the entire side seam and we're going to be using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowances. Now go to your sewing machine and go ahead and stitch using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then finish off your seams if you have a serger or you can zigzag. Okay, I went ahead and did both of my side seams. We laid front to back and we stitched using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance along both side seams. And now what we're going to do is finish off the hem of our skirt. So what I want you to do is I want you to serge the entire hem of your skirt. If you have a serger, you can also just use a zigzag stitch. And we're going to turn it up an inch and a quarter. Now you also have the option of folding a quarter inch, pressing it, and folding up an inch to give you a completely finished uh, hem on the inside. Okay, so I want a really clean finish, so I went ahead and I pressed a quarter inch and then I pressed up again one inch. But I want my top stitching to be here, right? So I don't, I want it on the top. I don't want my bobbin thread to be on the top. So I'm going to stitch close to the edge and I can feel where that fold is underneath. So you can feel it if you want to do it this way. You obviously have the option of stitching it the other way where your fold is facing up but just know that your bobbin thread will be on the right side of your fabric. And that way I catch just the underneath. Go ahead and continue until you're done with your entire hem. 
Okay, once the entire hem is finished, we're gonna go ahead and work on our bands. So I'm gonna set this aside for just a second. Grab your front bands and along the unnotched edge, long edge, you're gonna fold and press a half inch. You're gonna do that to both your front button bands. Okay, now along the center front, you're gonna go ahead and place your band, right sides facing, and you're going to match up that notch that you should have. And then go ahead and pin there. And then make sure that the top is flushed, but the bottom is going to extend 3 eighths of an inch. Go ahead and pin the other one the same exact way and then stitch using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I went ahead and I stitched my band down to the center front and I went ahead and I pressed my seam allowances towards my band. Now before we stitch this down, we're gonna finish off the bottom end. So what I want you to do is with the right side facing you, I want you to fold your band in half, okay? And then go ahead and put a pin there and we're going to stitch using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance across the bottom. Okay, once you stitched across, you can go ahead and turn this to the right side and then use something to poke through that corner. Make sure you don't poke through it, okay? And now what I want you to do is I want you to press this to the inside, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that the fold is just slightly past your stitching. So you're gonna see your stitching. You wanna press it in half so that that fold, like I said, is just barely passing it. That way when you stitch over the top, you are um, sure to catch it on the underside. Okay, once you have it pressed, we're going to pin it so that we can top stitch. Now, you can top stitch with the wrong side facing up so that you can see the edge. But I always like to make sure that my stitching is perfect on the right side because that's where you're going to see it. So I like to pin on the right side. So what I do is I put my pin in between my seam line, right in that ditch, and I make sure that I'm catching the underside, right? Making sure that I'm catching just the very tip of that fold, and then I pin. And I do that all the way up, and you can feel it on the, under, on the top side, so you just wanna make sure you can feel the bottom band, and pin. You're gonna continue pinning your entire band the same way. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to stitch really close to our seam line, about an eighth of an inch away. So back stitch at the beginning and at the end. When you're done, it should be nice and neat both on the wrong side and the right side. Okay, once you're done with your front bands, give it all a good press, and now I want you to go ahead and do two rows of gathering stitches. I've already done mine, but I want to tell you really quickly. So I did my two rows of gathering stitches using uh, the longest stitch available on my sewing machine, but I do it in sections. So I did two rows of gathering sections for the front panel, then I do my two rows of gathering for my back panel, and then I do the last uh, front panel. That just makes it easier for me to gather sections at a time. So go ahead and do your gatherings, two rows of gathering stitches, and now we're gonna set this aside and build out the bodice. Okay, so we're gonna grab our front and our side front, and we're going to pin them together. So match up your notch and then pin at the bottom and at the top. Once you have it pinned, go ahead and pin the other one the same way and using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're going to stitch both fronts. Okay, I went ahead and surged my raw edges and then I pressed my seam allowance to one side. Now go ahead and grab your side back and you're going to pin the side seam. So the side back to the side front. You're gonna pin both of them the same way. 
And now go ahead to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now go ahead and grab your center back which was cut on the fold and I'm going to pin one side to the back. and then I'm going to pin the other side to the other back. And again, go ahead and stitch 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance on both sides. Okay, once you have your bodice sewn together, this would be a really good time for you to try it on for fit. So go ahead, put it on, pin the front, and see if you need to take in a bit or make, just make sure it fits the way that you want before we move any further and attach our bodice to our skirt. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put together our facings, which oddly resemble fallopian tubes. <laughs> okay, now go ahead and grab your back. Make sure that the curve is up and not down like this, okay? And then pin to the side. And pin the other side. Now go ahead and stitch using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance on both sides. Okay, once we sew together the sides of our facing, it now resembles a g-string. <laughs> so we're going to set this aside and we're going to work on our straps and then we'll come back to our facing. So for our straps, you should have two. You're going to fold them in half lengthwise. You're going to stitch using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, then you're going to turn your straps right side out. Okay, once you have your straps done and turn right side out, give them a good press and you're going to pin them along the back seam, okay? So this is our side seam and then we have our back seams. So go ahead and pin them on and then baste them in place. Once we have them basted, you're going to try this on again and then position your front ones where they need to be and just make sure that they fit the way that you want to. The straps are made a bit longer um, so that you can adjust it to your body. Okay, so once you tried it on just to make sure that the straps weren't too long, I had to cut mine down a bit. I'm going to go ahead and pin it to the front. So I'm going to pin it right in the middle of that princess seam. and then just make sure that it's not twisted, okay? And then you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Now go ahead and stitch down your front straps. Okay, so once you have your straps down, we're going to go ahead and place your facing, right sides facing, over your bodice. And I'm going to pin first at my side seams. And go ahead and pin along the back. Okay, once you have your straps down, you have the option of finishing off the bottom of your facing so it's nice and clean. And then we're going to go ahead and pin it to our bodice. I'm going to pin matching my side seams first. Pin along your back. And along the front. Okay, now you can go ahead to your sewing machine and we're going to stitch using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance along the center front, along the top and back of our bodice. Okay, we're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. I'm going to pivot. Okay, now while we're still at the machine, we're going to go ahead and do some understitching. I'm going to start right back where I started, making sure that my seam allowance is facing my facing. And I'm going to stitch close to the seam, but only on my facing. I'm going to try to go as far up as I can. Now I'm going to move along the top.
now go ahead and press your facing to the inside. Okay, I went ahead and grabbed my gathering threads and I gathered each section. And basically what I do is I gather and then I sort of match up my sections. So I'm going to align my side seams first and obviously right sides are facing. And open out your facing. Your skirt is going to go along the front. Make sure that your facing is sticking out because we're going to fold it over onto itself after we stitch it down, okay? So go ahead and pin. And then I'm going to do my other front. I'm going to open my facing out. Make sure that I'm aligning the front of my skirt with the front of my bodice. Match and pin my side seam. And then pin the rest of my back. Okay, now let's go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch our bodice to our skirt at the waistline using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so as you can see, my facing is open and my skirt is right along where we attached our button band to our skirt. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to stitch through all layers. Back stitch the beginning using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You can adjust your gathers to make sure that they're even as you go along. Okay, and now I'm going to fold over my facing. Now you can go ahead, cut all your loose threads, serge your seam allowance if you have a serger, or you can zigzag it. Okay, I went ahead and serged my seam allowance. Now you can go ahead and turn this to the right side. Then you have a nice clean finish, both on the front and in the back. Do the other side. And now, the button placement really depends on your body. And the reason I say that is because our bust um, sort of end up in different places. So you might need a button in the center. Um, you might need four buttons. Although it's just three buttons at the bodice, I found that when I add a fourth button, it just gave me a little bit more closure. So that is really just up to you where you wanna place your button holes um, and then whether or not you wanna use buttons or snaps because I've seen people use both. Um, and so the, the last thing that we have to do is to add the pocket if you want to add the pocket. So I'm going to show you. I'm not going to add the pocket to my dress because I just don't want the pocket for this particular one. I've made this dress, I think, four times now. Um, and for this one, I just don't want it. But I am going to show you how to finish it and then pin it onto your dress should you want it. Okay, so for the pocket, I went ahead and serge the top edge and you should have marked your fold line that was on the pattern piece. So what I'm gonna have you do first is to, with right sides facing, I want you to fold along that fold line and we're going to stitch 3 eighths of an inch all the way around. Okay, so I went ahead and turned this right back to the right side and I pressed under 3 eighths of an inch along that stitching line that we did and then down the bottom. And just because I wanted to, I went ahead and top stitched the top of my pocket, but that's just a personal preference. So if you're going to attach your pocket to your dress, where you place it is really up to you. And the reason I say that is because I have pretty short arms, so my pockets always tend to be a little higher for me because if they're too low or where they're supposed to be, they're usually a little too far down for my apparently short arms. So you might have long arms and so you might want your pocket to sit a little further down so the placement is really up to you however i do place the middle of my pocket along my side seam because i want my pockets to be along the side of my dress so that's the first placement and then depending again on the length of your arms you may want it higher or lower so what i suggest is for you to pin it in place try your dress on 
see if the pocket is where you want it and if you need to bring it up or down. So I'm going to place my pocket a little higher because like I said, I have short arms. And I'm going to pin it in place. However, I want my pocket to sit a little further out off the body of the dress. So what I do is I sort of pinch about a half inch in the middle of my pocket and then I pin it. Now you can place your pocket completely flat onto your dress. Again, that's just a personal preference. So I'm going to pin and I'm going to pin. The bottom I of course pin flat. I just like for the top of my pocket to sort of buckle a little bit. So then what I do is I measure however far down I place my pocket so that I could place my other one in the same exact place. And then you're just going to edge stitch all the way around the sides and bottom of your pocket. Okay, so since I'm going to show you how to attach the pocket, I might as well just add the pockets to my dress too. Um, so I have it pinned in place. Make sure there's nothing else under except where you're stitching so you don't accidentally stitch something else down. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and I'm going to stitch along the edge. I'm going to pivot. Pivot again. Once you stitch both your pockets in place, you are all done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this sew along and remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next time I upload a video. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Mimi G Style. Bye!